MIAA Monday back again this week on a Tuesday. Again, my fault. Had to make some changes again on my end because I don't look ahead of scheduling sometimes. So that's part of my downfall. But MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy here with me once again. Sir, thank you as always for the time. Yeah, it's good to be with you, Chris. Uh, happy uh, Happy Valentine's Day, uh, President's Day, whatever whatever holidays uh, we're, we're celebrating here today. But, uh, yeah, it's good to be with you and uh, – um, uh, getting close, uh, tournament, tournament time just around the corner for us. It's hard to believe that we're already here. We've talked about it last week about how close we are to the MIAA tournament, but when you have some teams like Missouri Western playing three games last week, three games this week, you really kind of feel things are amping up. Now that's partly because of rescheduling, but at the same time, you feel like things are right around the corner at this point. Yeah. There are some teams that are going to, uh, you know, play a lot of games and, uh, a short period of time uh, as we get ready for the tournament. And, and uh, you know, that's probably pretty good preparation for, uh, for the tournament there, you know, there are going to be some seeds that are, you know, going to try and win, uh, win four games in five days. And uh, uh, you know, that's, that's hard to do. So uh, uh, we're, we're doing everything we can, Chris, as, as you and I have talked to make sure all of these games that we're, postponed during the year because of COVID, uh, because of sickness. Um, we've, we've decided as a conference that the, the right thing to do is to make those games up, to reschedule them. And, and uh, we've got, I think, um, after, after the two games that took place yesterday, um, we have completed, I think, 15 of the 21 that we had to reschedule so six more to go, and uh, uh, it's been um, it's been great. You know, our schools have worked together uh, to find days uh, in the calendar to play. We've had to move some games around, games from a a Wednesday to a Thursday, so a team could make up a game on a Tuesday. Those types of things. But yeah, uh, for some of our schools, Chris, it's uh, it's a lot of basketball in February uh, that they're playing, but. Uh, but we're doing it for the right reason. Our, our student athletes come to our campuses uh, for the chance to compete. And uh, we, we, we're doing everything we can to make sure we play uh, every one of these basketball games this year. Now, I know when we get into the MIAA tournament, you guys don't want any disruptions when it comes to COVID-19 or anything like that. A lot of teams have already been in protocols and went through it too. Is, is there a scenario or anything you guys are trying to do to mitigate maybe those concerns for programs for teams? Because once they're in the tournament bubble, I don't want to say it's the same bubble as we've seen before, but once you're in that tournament mindset, you don't want anything kind of disrupting the team and what you're doing at the same time. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, my personal opinion is that we're taking you know, a very balanced, measured approach. Um, to COVID this year, I think, you know, we're seeing play out across the country, uh, even in Los Angeles for the Super Bowl, uh, a feeling that, uh, you know, that maybe this is starting to uh, uh, get behind us and we're, we're getting back to normal. So um, we, we have spent a considerable amount of time the last couple of weeks, Chris, with our COVID-19 task force, um, trying to figure out what, what makes sense for the MIAA basketball tournament this year when we'll be back at municipal auditorium, hopefully uh, some pretty big crowds and, uh, you know, doing everything we can to make sure our, our student athletes and coaches are taken care of. Um, at the end of the day, Chris, our, our objective with this basketball tournament, um, you know, even though it's a postseason event, even though it's our, our conference championship, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to make sure we do everything we can uh, to position our MIAA men's and women's teams uh, for the NCAA tournament. Uh, it's nice to win a conference championship. It's even nicer to win a national championship. So um, what we're trying to do next week or two weeks from now is to have a basketball tournament um, that will showcase elite competition but we're doing it in a safe environment to make sure our student athletes and coaches are, are healthy and available uh, for selection to the NCAA tournament. Um, just a couple of things that fans will notice, Chris, uh, that, that will be a little different. Um, 
one is that we're we're not going to have um, uh, have a, a, a reentry policy uh, or or the ability to reentry uh, a session once you've left. So if if a fan uh, decides to leave uh, a session after the first game, um, they're you know they're going to not be able to reenter until the next session. So we're just going to have a little tighter control of the gate. And, uh, you know, once you're in, you're in. And if you decide to leave, you've got to wait to, to come back with your with your next ticket. We're also going to uh, limit the ability of fans um, and friends and family to gather in the, in the concourse and the hallways and the lobby during the tournament. I know a lot of people do that to try and uh, to meet with our teams after a game. And, and if uh, our teams want to do that, they can do that over at the hotel or they can, they can do that at, at seats inside the arena, but we're just not going to have the, the gatherings uh, in the hallway and the concourses that we've, we've done before uh, Chris. And, you know, we're also going to um, have a little different uh, approach in our, our media room where we have press conferences, as you know, it's a very, a very small space. So we're going to, uh, we're going to ask our uh, media and, and uh, university guests that are there for those, those post-game press conferences to, to be masked up. Um, obviously our coaches and student athletes, um, you know, who are talking in the microphones won't be masked, but we're, we're asking that any of the guests and media in that tight room, that small space that, uh, uh, that they would be masked up. Uh, there's no mass requirement, uh, for any of the fans inside municipal, uh, you know, uh, it's all open seating, all general admission seating. So, you know, pick, pick the seat you want, uh, sit wherever you want. If you want to wear a mask, uh, and you feel comfortable doing that great. If you don't, uh, no problem. Uh, so no mass requirement during the tournament. Uh, just some of these uh, preca precautionary uh, measures that we're going to take to keep our student athletes and uh, our, our coaches safe. We're going to have a six foot buffer around the court, uh, behind the benches, on the baseline, um, and uh, just really limit uh, the ability of uh, anyone to get too close uh, to our uh, score table workers. Um, the team benches or, or, or the playing court. Uh, but other than that, you know, Chris, our message is if you're not feeling well, uh, stay home, uh, watch the, watch the games on the MIAA network. And, uh, if you're feeling fine, uh, you know, come on down and watch, uh, watch some great basketball. I'm going to ask you a kind of a more sentimental question here. Um, it's going to be about, it's going to be two years since the, the tournament's been at municipal and two years ago was the last time we saw any basketball that season. And it, sometimes it feels longer than two years ago. Other yeah. times it feels like it's been, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but I don't know. It, it just feels, I don't know if interesting or difference the right word. It just feels like we're going back to where the last time, Things were normal before the pandemic. Now the pandemic's still going on, I know, but it's, I don't know, it, it just feels right, if that makes sense, is kind of having that opportunity to be back there where it kind of all ended two years ago, too. Yeah, and that's kind of why we're, you know, trying to, trying to be careful and cautious, but also to try and let our fans experience the type of event that they, they experienced two years ago and before that, and um, you know, it's a big arena and, and we've got plenty of seats and people should be comfortable coming down and watching some, some great college basketball. Some of the best NCAA basketball in the country um, will, will be played over those five days. And, uh, um, and, and as you know, uh, the men's side, the women's side, you know, pretty wide open, pretty competitive. Um, some great teams, but very very even, uh, you know, especially on the women's side, uh, you know, we've got, got a number of teams coming in that can win this tournament, but, you know, we don't, we, we don't want fans to, we, we didn't want to get in the business of requiring a mask or, you know, having to sign seats or, you know, we want, we want people to enjoy this tournament. We're doing, you know, a few things to, uh, to make sure that uh, we're being extra cautious with our, 
our student athletes and coaches to make sure they they stay healthy and and they can play in the NCAA tournament. But um, yeah, I want people to feel like, hey, this is this is what uh, this is what I remember. This is uh, great basketball. This is this is where the NCAA uh, or the MIAA should be playing. Uh, it's postseason tournament, not on a campus, but in a historic municipal auditorium. And, and uh, it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a, a great day um, when we, when we tip off and we see everyone back in the stands and we see our student athletes uh, and coaches out on the court. And uh, yeah, I might, uh, I might get a little choked up because it's been a, it's been a lot of hard work to get back to this point. Um, it's been a lot of, uh, challenging moments for our student athletes, you know, to two years ago to have, uh, you know, uh, right during the regional tournament um, to, to be shut down and to, uh, you know, have both men's and women's teams in the MIAA that had shots at national championships to, to be told their season's over. And, uh, and then last year, you know, for, um, both men's and women's basketball to have their their schedule shortened um, uh, to start late or to not play as many games to 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 have to play the MIAA tournaments on campus you know lots of things our student athletes have been through and um, I think uh, I think it'll be great medicine for everyone involved to be back in municipal auditorium and. Uh, and uh, to start to feel a little more, a little more like it's normal and, and the way it should be. Absolutely. I, I didn't know exactly how to word that when I was asking. So like, it just, it's going to feel, cause I, even thinking about just being able to watch basketball down there. Cause I, I think it's fascinating to kind of be in there at first, you know, first time I was covering at municipal, I was like, I don't know anything about municipal. I was like, why is it played here? When you, but when you start learning the history and everything like that, but now, two years removed from the last time and starting thinking about that week after it does feel kind of like the, you know, the right way, or I don't, I don't not right way, but it's kind of, everything feels like it's going back or moving forward. Maybe that's the right word. It's kind yeah, of, it's a, it's a great way. home. It's a yeah. great, it's a great venue. I, I would, I would argue that uh, it's probably the best venue of all division two conference tournaments in the country. The, the history of that building, having hosted nine NCAA Final Fours, the, the building where John Wooden won his first national championship with, with UCLA, all of the, uh, you know, the historic uh, NAIA and NCAA games that have taken place there. I think, uh, I think that's the building where uh, Wilt Chamberlain, uh, when he was at KU, lost in a, a triple overtime national championship game to North Carolina. And, um, and it's just a great place for us to be uh, for the, uh, for the MIAA tournament and, and the history of our conference. And, um, and, and when you think about uh, contributions, the MIAA has made to, to college basketball, but yeah, it's the right place. It, it'll, it'll be great to be back there. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll have a great, uh, a great week of weather and our, our fans can get out and enjoy power and light district and all the great things that are part of downtown Kansas city. And, and uh, you know, we're proud that, um, that we get to kick off uh, March madness in Kansas city. Uh, so much great basketball that takes place in Kansas city, both at municipal um, and at the T-Mobile center with the big 12 tournament and the NAIA national championship and um, uh, a lot of years, uh, NCAA regional tournaments that take place. So it's great to be part of March Madness in, in Kansas city. And it's um, truly nice to be the first one out of the gate uh, to, to be able to do that. A couple more questions about the tournament. Uh, just looking at the field, you, you kind of talked about, it's kind of, feeling wide open. So, so to speak, in you know, a course conference tournaments kind of always feel like that because anybody can kind of get on a run and win four games in five days. It's just kind of, if you get hot right time, you can go on a run. How do you kind of evaluate or look at how the conference looks going into a conference tournament? Cause like you said, the goal is to keep teams going into the NCAA tournament, 
whether it's the automatic bid or, you know, just national qualifiers too. Yeah. Well, you know, what coaches talk about um, with their teams is that, you know, we want to be playing our be our best basketball uh, in late February and March. And, and I think when you look around our conference, uh, we have a number of teams in both men's and women's basketball uh, that are playing their best basketball right now. Um, you know, certainly on the women's side, uh, um, we've got uh, Missouri Southern that's like on a long uh, win streak. Uh, Hayes has been playing well all year. Um, Missouri Western's been playing great all year. Um, you know, those are the schools along with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Central Missouri's got some talented players. Um, you, Nebraska Kearney, uh, you know, is our is our defending uh, uh, champ. Uh, so there, you know, it's going to be uh, uh, Northwest Missouri State uh, has had a nice year. Uh, they've got uh, they've got some great players. So I, I you know, it's hard to uh, it's hard to tell really what. Uh, uh, what the path forward is on the women's side and in, in men's basketball, Northwest is, uh, you know, certainly dominated early, uh, but of late, you know, they've, they've lost uh, a couple of, a couple of games against central Oklahoma uh, Emporia state. Um, you know, those are teams that, uh, that certainly believe that they, they have what it takes to uh, dethrone Northwest Missouri state and, and to, to win a conference tournament. So um, I think I think it's going to be great basketball on both the men's and women's side. And we've, uh, you know, we'll probably go till that last Saturday of the season, February 26, uh, some games that will decide seeding and some, some regular season games that will probably decide who's in and who's out um, before the brackets are released that night, uh, Saturday night, February 26. I'll get you out of here on this one because I know we're running a little bit low on time here, and we've talked a lot about the tournament, and we could talk all day about basketball and the MIW tournament. But I'm gonna let you be a little selfish here because you're the guy that gets to hand off the trophy at the end of the tournament and everything. Being able to do that back at Municipal, what is that feeling like? Because you already kind of talked about it. it's going to be kind of an emotional feeling being back there, but knowing that you guys are back there, being able to, and you get to hand off the trophy to the winners back at municipal for the first time in two years. What, what do you think that's going to be like for you? You know, the thing I'll be thinking about Chris is just uh, kind of what everyone in our conference has been through the last two years to get to a place where, um, you know, hopefully we're celebrating the end of an MIAA season where once again, uh, we played every single basketball game that was scheduled. And as I mentioned earlier, we're six games away from doing that. And uh, we played every game last year. Um, we were the only conference in the country, any division, to play every single men's game and women's game that we had scheduled. We had to make up 45 games to do it, but we did it. This year, uh, we've had to make up 21 games on both the men's and women's side, but we're going to do it. And a lot of conferences, Chris, you know, we talked about this. Um, they have forfeit policies. If games don't get played, it's canceled. It's not made up. They've got teams in the league that, you know, some are playing 25 games. Others are playing 18 games. Um, and that's not the right thing to do. That's not the right thing to do for our student athletes. And, um, and that's what I'm going to be thinking about when I hand those trophies out, um, just how proud I am to be part of a conference that spends so much time and, and so much effort in, in doing the right thing for student athletes uh, to, to make sure we're going the extra mile uh, in everything we do. But as it relates to this, to make sure that, that we're getting all of these games in and um, and I, and I think that's going to be the feeling that overcomes me is just great pride um, that I get to be associated with this um, historic and, and uh, a conference that um, is, um, is made up of people that, that care about each other and especially care about student athletes. MIAA tournament, basketball tournament, just a few weeks away, Municipal Auditorium down in Kansas City. 
It's going to be an exciting few days down there back at home for the MIAA in the Municipal Auditorium. Can't wait to be down there to watch some good basketball. And, sir, thank you as always for coming on and taking time to talk about MIAA. And, of course, right now it's all about the MIAA Basketball Tournament, too. It's all it's all basketball, but I'll I'll leave on this too, Chris. You know, we just had uh, we just had Central Oklahoma win the uh, conference championship in wrestling this past weekend, and uh, in a, a few days we'll have our MIAA men's and women's teams uh, in Maryville at Northwest Missouri State uh, competing for uh, indoor uh, track and field championships, um, and then the national championships will be at uh, at Pittsburgh State uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. So um, we are focused a lot on basketball, but we we still have some uh, some student athletes in in track and field and wrestling that are are uh, going to be in the hunt for national titles. And uh, we're very 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 proud of their efforts and their coaches' efforts in those sports as well, Chris. Absolutely, a busy time for everybody. MIW Commissioner Mike Racy, thank you as always. You bet. Good to see you, Chris. Thanks. Good to see you. Thank you.